happens. Oh, I just realized that the audio was not coming out to the stream. There yeah, we I go. Didn't hear I didn't hear anything. Yeah, now there's audio. Hey. Hi, now I, get to, now I get to hear myself, which will definitely disrupt my brain. Yeah, so this yeah, this is Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. Um, th that what you just saw was the entire game is just like endless battles over. Good, the mouse cursor is showing up on stream. Um, <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't it? No, that's what I want. Um, oh, okay. I'm on an iPad right now. I just got an iPad Pro, and so right, I have a mouse. This work. Okay, there. I now have screens I can see. Good. So yeah, up here where it says quests. Yeah, that's the main story, but I'm too weak to do quest number 18 and get to the next cutscene, uh, so rip to me, I guess. Um, over in stats, uh, you level up, and you build your deck of, 30, of up to 30 cards. The catch is there's only 37 cards in the entire game. Can you have duplicates? No, explicitly you can't have duplicates. Duplicates uh, break down. <laughs> Um, there is saying there that there is a finite number of permutations of the deck that I could calculate if I so chose. Yeah, uh, here you can see all thirty-seven cards in this album. Yes. Um. Yeah. If you go to the shop, uh, which they very much want you to do. Uh, they really love it when you go to the shop. You can, um... Oh, I can do a daily draw. For free. Great. I got a blue abu to go... I didn't actually have that before, but I already had the green abu and the red abu because there's only so many Disney characters that have cards so far. <laughs> this is clearly the start of a gotcha game. Like, the start of something. My question is, how the, the fuck did you ship this? Oh, no! Uh, yeah, you can get to the draw odds and get this full... Oh, good, I can fit almost every single card and its draw rates on screen at once. Um, you can see the four good cards up here because they have 0.1% probability of getting drawn. Great. Um... And if you're asking, well, how much does it actually cost to get uh, 3,000 jewels? Well, once per week, you can pay $15, which is the discounted rate. Otherwise, you're looking at about $25 for every 10 pull worth no guarantees of non-duplicates. It's real bad. That's not great. I will say that the uh, premium currency at least is shared between the other half of the app, which is the Kingdom Hearts mobile game that already existed. They're both in the same app so that they can um, share some progression. And um, the microtransaction purchases, uh, but also fuck everything. So doing the math and keeping in mind that I haven't done computational math in a while, and I'm doing it on a calculator it baked into Windows, uh, there are about 10,300,000 deck combinations. So more than I expected. Uh, um, oh, except their order doesn't matter. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's yep, that's, uh, that's factored into the math. Okay, yes. Um, but... There is a best deck combination because there are four cards that are actively bad and four cards that are actively better than everything else. I could go do the math to figure that out then, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that um, makes the math way more complicated. Yes, regardless, uh, the story good, the uh, gameplay terrible, and this character in pink in the bottom right corner, her name is Vor. They shipped a Kingdom Hearts game and named one of the primary five characters Vor, or primary six characters Vor. She doesn't look like the others artistically. Uh huh. Like there's something like like the the characters she is seated among 
she does not appear to have been drawn by the same hand. You are correct. Um, oh. Well, you, you are correct that it appears that way, but they are. That is that is all Tetsuya okay. Nomura original artwork. Because she's shaded completely differently. She's used in a different color palette. Her eye, her face structure is different. Yeah, like, it feels like she was added later. Um, anyways, so you're always playing a Xehanort because this is the game about Xehanort, who is the main antagonist of the series. This is, like, his teenage years. <laughs> that is what this is. Uh, before he was voiced by the late Leonard Nimoy. Oh, uh, I, and I don't see Leonard Nimoy when I look at that character. Again, this is young him. I will, I can give you, um, I will just send it to you. The official, oh, the official Xehanort character profile. Yes, like the, the key art, or I'll just actually send you to the wiki because that'll be funnier, because you'll eventually find some text that is especially stupid. Um, but, yes, that is... I love that mirror pose, where this is like, okay, I drew half of him. That's good enough. Uh, Ericus, who is, uh, who goes on to be voiced by Mark Hamill, uh, but he's also a teenager Jesus. here. What is this series, really? Um, so Xehanort and Ericus are returning characters. Like, these are the characters that people know going in. And then there's four new characters. Hermid, Braggy, Erd, and Vor. And it's important to note that Braggy is not the character Brag, which is B-R-A-I-G. I mean, I don't think there's any, uh world in which I I hear, oh, these characters have similar names, but they're not the same person in oh. this series, where I go like, what? Actually, they're probably the same person. Uh, it's stupid and a long story. Yeah, I mean, you could tell me that two characters who look exactly the same have the same name and are never in the same place at the same time are different characters and have nothing to do with one another, and I'd be like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, this is like probably 60 years before Kingdom There's... Hearts 1. So 37 cards right now. Yes. Two of them are multicolored abus. Uh, three of them. Oh, okay. Well, no, that, that makes more sense. As long so, as it's not two. Yeah, so here's what I have. There's three Keyblades, uh, three of these uh, shadows. Um, hang on, give me just one second. I want to turn on Do Not Disturb. You're telling me that 8.1 percent of the current cards are heterochromatic abus yeah uh there's also 8.1 percent that are uh heterochromatic playing cards from alice in wonderland okay um, at least at least those are theoretically different characters no but it's the same five on each it's the same image did, just with a different background did they just did they just not have a budget for this? Uh, okay. We gotta stretch the art out. All right, you asked for it. I'm gonna read you the note from the director that came alongside the shipping of this <laughs> game. Does it say we're sorry? Yes. Tetsuya ah! Nomura put out a letter that is um not in his usual tone, but hilarious. Um, alright. Kingdom Hearts Dark Road launches today. I'm sure you're wondering, didn't the Dark Seeker saga portraying the battle against Xehanort conclude with Kingdom Hearts 3? You're always thinking that, James. Well, I... Sometimes. Well, it's hard to say if Dark Road is part of the saga, since this story isn't about the battle against him, but about his own struggles. You might think that's a stretch, Wait. and frankly, maybe it is. It's not hard to say. You are the creator of this effed up series. You can just say it. But this is a story I've been hoping to tell for a long time. It just never seemed the right time, but when the Union Cross team approached me about creating another game with a new main character and seeing how Xehanort has a surprising number of fans, we decided to do it. It was fate. Um, 
da 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 this is just saying it's before Kingdom Hearts 1, and uh, Kingdom Hearts isn't actually done after 3, they never said that. Here's where it is. The Kingdom Hearts series previously showed Xehanort in his younger years, and the protagonist of Dark Road is the teenage Xehanort from Kingdom Hearts 3 who enjoys playing chess. The first installment of the story, so the content available at launch, was long enough to make the team pale, and for good reason. They'd recently reduced their animators, leaving only two on staff who could create cutscenes in Flash. And with the workload of Union Cross, it was more than they could handle. Speaking of, if you're familiar with Flash, please send us your application. Why? No, no, pause. Pause. Why the fuck are they doing it in Flash? What year is this? Because this game start... This is... Dark Road is attached to Union Cross which is a rebranding of Unchained Key, which is a mobile port of a Yahoo mobile flash or a Yahoo browser flash game. This, this whole thing started literally in on a Japanese flash site. Does anyone at Square Enix ever actually check in with what the, what the Kingdom Hearts team is doing <laughs> and go like, yo, what's wrong with y'all? Uh... It's worth noting that uh, Disney Interactive sees Kingdom Hearts as their crown jewel. Have they, have, yeah, a company that functionally is like, what? A licensing house? Uh, 50, 60 people. How many of them are, are lawyers? Contract lawyers? Um, I like know that 40, John Drake people. is heading up external partnerships now. That's that's one of those like okay no really how the hell did this happen? Um so he, here we are. I also hope you enjoy playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Uh the game that hasn't had base that has barely had any content for the last year. I've shared with the team ways to make it more accessible for those taking a break or those starting with Dark Road and those ch changes will be implemented in the near future. I have so much more to talk about like the mystery behind the initial Dark Road concept. DP, or secrets about how the title came to be. Wait. Yeah, I know. But it's a hectic day, and I'm on the move Damn while it. typing this on my dying phone, so those stories will have to wait for another time. Bye. There is no way, there is no conceivable way that they didn't do this on purpose. Like, literally any human being that, with, with even the most remote real sense of reality would have read this and said, this reads like a crazy person wrote it. No, we're not publishing this. We're not. But instead, this went through a translator. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. At least two human beings, its original author and a translator, said, yeah, this is okay. Yep. Because the translator could have just gone in there and said, like, oh, this is not okay. I'm just going to try. I'm going to basically. You don't tell Tetsuya Nomura, no. I'm going to rewrite this. He won't know any better. I'm going to rely on the fact he won't read the English text. And then just like, okay, now it's, now it sounds a lot less terrifying. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, Union Cross, where at least there's more gameplay. <laughs> also, I need to speed. Is that, is that dark shaded Hercules over there? Uh, Yep. Yeah, that's from uh, that's from one of his Kingdom Hearts three renders. Uh, this is my custom character because in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross you are just a nameless uh, Keyblade wielder, which means that they can add and sell you cosmetics constantly. As as you do. Um, let me tell you. I that you knowing the other me knowing the other games i have downloaded uh-huh am i gonna suffer is this, when is this we are game? done with kingdom hearts you're gonna want to go back to kingdom hearts oh good so savor this oh this, all right hold on pa well, hold on the screen for a second oh this sorry. is the this is the busiest screen i've ever seen at anything ever what the um the cute like That's the pre pre level screen? Yes, there's okay. just art assets like hastily appended to the screen, slapped everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Poke power not streaming on mixer. 
Uh, yeah. This is... I don't know what y'all are talking about. This is the Kingdom Hearts mobile game. What in the absolute hell? I agree. What in the absolute hell? So, yeah. So here's... So this is what the screen is. <laughs> this so, is... Um, yes, this is Krabby Cake up here. Level 1000 is the enemy. I'm using my bad guy Breaker plus 42 Wreck-It Ralph Keyblade, which is what this big flashy thing is. Yeah, I mean, Re Wreck-It Ralph, infamous Keyblade user. Um... So <laughs> they need to give him an office. That's away from so um, in the, in the gameplay of the primary uh, Kingdom Hearts uh, game, uh, like in the primary Kingdom Hearts mobile game, you have a Keyblade, which is basically a deck of six medals, and these medals are your attacks. And the core gameplay loop is you are pulling gotcha for these medals and you are upgrading them, and you are basically creating combos and structures. This is a thousand percent canon. This is, per per game, this has more critical story lore than any other Kingdom Hearts game in, the, in this gotcha mobile game. I have a few questions about the screen, but I'll let you finish first. Okay. Um... And so you are, you're going through, you're building the six. When you confirm this, you get access to um, other players. You're allowed to share one medal with other players. And it will serve, and that's what th this, um, all the hastily appended art assets next to bad <laughs> usernames is. This, this, this absolute unit of a screen. Okay. So, Imagine this on a phone. Imagine how impossible to oh, look at this would be on a phone. Yes, I I don't have to imagine. I've played this on multiple different phone si phone devices. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh huh. So so I have a question. Yes, go ahead. I'll I'll take questions now. What bad guy breaker plus forty two? Yes. Did anybody look at that and say what? Okay. So ignore the plus 42, that's just the current strength of Bad Guy Breaker. Bad Guy Breaker is the name of the keyblade. Plus 42 is just how many times I've leveled it up. I see. So Bad Guy Breaker is their name for the Wreck-It Ralph keyblade. We, I can go through all the keyblades in the equipment section. Uh, what do I do want? That? I have a few more questions first. Yeah. Uh, secondly, did Sakurai's wife work on this interface? Uh, no. Because there's just horrible colors and weird shaped buttons. Nope. And nope. images hastily stacked on top of No, each because other. all of the reds are on the same line and all of the oranges are, most of the oranges are on the same <laughs> that's, that's line. That's true. The buttons are vaguely the same shape. Uh, why are the damage numbers in the million? Uh, shh. It's because the game starts, when the game launched, it, all the attack numbers were in the four digits, and this is the result of power creep. But what if because this mobile the... game's been in production for like five years now. But so... what if he started the damage numbers in the one digit? Um, they are in the one digits if your attack isn't stronger than the opponent's defense. Anyways, so here's Starlight. This is the keyblade they start you out with. It's not flashy until you upgrade. Can I catch you up on the Kingdom Hearts lore? Yes. Will I know? What? <laughs> Why are the purple-haired girl's eyes oh, so creepy? because she's That's an fair. evil Lolita doll from the Toy Story world in Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> she's a boss. She's a boss battle. She comes out of I... a dollhouse. She's about to, While you're trying to rescue Buzz Lightyear, I think. And uh -huh. you have to fight her uh, with, alongside uh, Donald Duck, Goofy, and um, Woody. I bet. Yep. Why well, is Axel here? Because Axel is part of Kingdom Hearts. It, it really is Axel. Um, I, absolutely not. Okay. So this is Starlight. This is all wrong. This is Treasure oh, this. Trove. This is the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves Keyblade, which, <laughs> so it's designed, so there's like mining ore and a pickaxe uh, through the design. Does Pixar know about this? Yes, Pixar wrote the Kingdom Hearts 3 Toy Story story, and it took them three years to do so. 
It was a full collaboration. Pixar signed <laughs> off on every Monsters, Inc. and Kingdom Hearts render, asset, everything, including the original story, because the Toy Story story is canon to Toy Story, not just Kingdom Hearts. No. Yes. That's, no. Yes, it is. That's too much. Nope. That's too much. Nope. How? Nope. So, so you're telling me. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me. Yep. That that there are heartless and nobodies in the Toy Story canon. Not nobody, but heartless, yes. Why? Well, why not? If if the toys, if the because if nobodies the don't appear in that world in Kingdom Hearts three. But you can't you can't remove that one segment of Kingdom Hearts and say this one chapter of this full game is canon, because ultimately that canon creeps. No, because it's it's canon for Buzz and Woody. Buzz and Woody get sent to a parallel universe at the start of the Kingdom Hearts three Toy Story world. So so you're so Buzz and Woody went back to the house afterwards. Uh yes, at the end of the Kingdom Hearts three world, the, the Kingdom Hearts three Toy Story three or Toy Story world takes place between two and three, Toy Story two and three. And, and Woody walked up to Slinky Dog. Nope, and Slinky said, Dog didn't make it. Sli not half the toys didn't carry, didn't go forward, which is the impetus for why Bu uh, Buzz and Woody want to go back to the normal universe. Also, this is the great, the impetus for the greatest scene at the end of the uh, Kingdom Hearts Three Toy Story Three world. The greatest scene in all of Kingdom Hearts Three. I swear this is real. This is what Wario sixty four tweets out whenever he's referencing Kingdom Hearts Three. Anything, uh, they're going up against an actual Kingdom Hearts villain. And Sora's talking about it, and Woody and Buzz have no idea what the fuck is going on. But then Woody is like, this is why you're evil. It's because nobody's ever loved you before. I, it's great. I, so, so, all right, let, let, me, let me start again. So, so Woody needing to, to unburden his heart after having been subjected to the Kingdom Hearts universe. Goes up and talks to Bo Peep because... Nope, she's not in the universe. It's Rex, it's the green aliens, it's the green army men, and it's but Buzz. They go back. Yeah, they do at the, at the very, very end, yes. But Bo Peep yeah, isn't in... Bo Peep leaves between two and four. Anyways, yep. Toy Story's so, stupid, fine. too. Fine, he goes, he goes and talks to Rex. Yep. And, and he's, he's trying to explain to Rex the concept of Keyblades. Uh-huh. And he's trying to explain how... It can be the evil person who's just like you. He doesn't look anything like you, but he is you. And you put an X in your name somewhere, and you just jumble up all the letters. Oh, it's even better, because actually Rex doesn't think Sora is Sora, because Rex thinks that Sora is a video game character named Yozora, because the Kingdom Hearts 3 Toy Story 3 world opens with a fucking Final Fantasy th versus 13 trailer. Except everyone, all the character, Square Enix characters are slightly different, so instead of Noctis, it's Yozora, which also means Night Sky. Which is why the ending of Kingdom Hearts 3, the secret ending of the DLC, is just literally shot for shot a Final Fantasy vs. 13 trailer with Yozora looking out the um, limo window. So, so you're tell Kingdom Hearts 3 is dumb. Anyways, moving on to another Keyblade. We've got uh, Lady Luck, which is I the Alice in Wonderland games. Keyblade. Uh-huh. Uh, why is there just a pickaxe on it? Nope, that's... The, you're, you're behind. That's the... Wow, YouTube has a long delay. Yeah, that's the, um... Yeah, the one with the pickaxe on it is from the uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves when they're in the mining. Don't, don't worry, I was here the whole time and also am totally lost. Um, this is the Agrabah Three Wishes. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. Potato Head conspicuously not even mentioned once. Not referenced. Hasbro has reached their breaking point with this. No, we will not. You shall not. Um, there's Olympia, which is Hercules. Uh, so you're telling me. Zeus is facing that the clouds. Sora is likely canon to Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. A thousand percent. Uh, Disney owns the entire Kingdom Hearts property except for the licensed Final Fantasy characters. So, like... That's why, th that, that's why there have been rumors of a Disney plus Kingdom Hearts show. Because Kingdom just... Hearts is Disney. Kingdom, like, in Disney Infinity, you can wield a Keyblade. Like, this is just a thing. He could just have 
a a like a fight in the middle of the Dumbo ride in the middle of Disney World and it would be canon. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, Sora rides Dumbo in Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, this is the um, Beauty and the Beast Divine Rose Keyblade. This... Time travel being canon in this is nothing. Like, that's fine. That, that, whatever. No, time travel of being canon in Kingdom Hearts is actually what breaks everything, and I hate it. That is the most hated thing by fans, just because it's so convoluted and stupid. And... I mean, t time travel's canon in the Layton series. Like, it's, like, that's relatively benign by comparison. Um... Yeah, so this is just Moogle Glory, which is not based on a Disney World. Sleeping Lion, which is just based on Final Fantasy VIII. Counterpoint, which is not based on anything, really. Level 321. Yep. Uh-huh. The, the level cap used to be 300, then they bumped it to 500, <laughs> but it's way too stupid. Uh, this is Stroke of Midnight, which is uh, Cinderella, which has Cinderella's castle in it. Fenrir, which is... Loosely based on Cloud's Buster Sword. Uh, not... In this upgraded version, it actually loses the reference material of the Buster yeah, Sword, but it I starts the as Buster the Buster Sword. sword. I like that you have two of the same person. Oh, yeah. This one. A thousand percent. You could, I could get five different Roxases up in here if you really wanted. I like... Not just, like, two of the same rocks, like, five of the same Roxas metal. I could get five unique Roxas medals if I really wanted. I... Yeah, Pokepal is right. Even by time travel standards, so the rules of time me... travel make no sense in Kingdom Hearts. It's literally the worst implementation of time travel I've ever seen. So, by having five Roxas, I assume, just based on my knowledge of Kingdom Hearts, that means you have five Soras? That would be correct. Of course it is. Everyone's Sora in Kingdom Hearts. You're probably Sora right now if you don't even realize it. We're no, no, Sora. no. Everyone is connected to Sora. Roxas and Ven live in Sora's heart. Probably not enough space for two growing boys to live in. Ah, uh, who knows? It's a big, vast emptiness when you look in it. Anyways, this is Dark Gnaw. This is Missing Egg. This is Fairy Stars, which is based on... Something I, I fucking forget. I don't care anymore. Uh, this is Time and Dust, and this is Bad Guy Breaker based on Wreck Ralph. <laughs> GX confirms that he is in fact Sora. Um, what costume? What cosmetics are they currently trying to sell for real money? Um, oh, looks like they're <laughs> trying to sell um Year of the Rat costumes again. And big plush Chirithi costumes. And uh, Lilo and Stitch costumes. I'm. And uh, Viking costumes, it looks Why like. Why are there so many Kigurumis in this thing? Uh, because they. Is that, is that a Scrooge McDuck Lilo and Stitch costume? Uh, no. So Scrooge McDuck is a, is, uh, the icon on any metal that only exists to bestow an ability to another metal because it's, like, selling an ability. Uh, so Scrooge McDuck is going to be on most, most of these. Mm -hmm. Offer ends in 11 days to get this pink, get this pink stitch. Uh, yeah, it's called Angel, but it's just pink stitch. <laughs> Maybe in the deep lore of Lilo and Stitch that's explained. I don't think Lilo and Stitch has deep lore. <laughs> it has four movies and a TV show. Actually, it has, like, three TV shows. It had, uh... One of them was kind of decent, if I recall correctly. One of them... Th there was the American TV show, which concluded... Which was a Monster of the Week. That yeah. was a Monster of the Week thing. And then there was a Japanese TV show just called Stitch, because Stitch is very popular in Japan. Not the Lilo part. They can't relate. But they can definitely relate to Stitch as an alien. Can, can confirm Stitch quite popular in Japan. And then, um, mainland China made a show. Uh, which okay. got, re which, that and the Japanese show got released in, um, the, like, on, like, Disney, like, kids website or something. But it's especially good because my understanding is that the canon is that at the end of each show, Stitch goes back to outer space 
and then crash lands back to Earth, but this time on a different continent with a different uh, fifth grade girl. Gotta 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 be able to keep selling that merch. Yes. Okay. So that's Kingdom Hearts. It sure is. Th that is maximally Kingdom Hearts. Um. But don't worry, let's keep the Disney train going, because I downloaded some of the most highest-grossing games on the Japanese app store, and holy shit what I found. Why is every icon the same game? Oh, I deleted, like, ten of them, because they were all just the same rhythm game with different uh, anime characters, all from the same company. Anyways, I this need... is Disney's Twisted Wonderland. Have you heard of this, watch... James? No, I'm already... It, it already oh. looks like Bearsworth Manor. I'm so excited that you've never heard of this. Is this is this, oh, this a rebranding of Square Enix's Bearsworth Manor? Nope. Oh, is that a reference that I'm the only human who's made in the last 10 years? Uh, yes. Uh, it's saying I need to download another gig. So I guess we can talk while this downloads. I need to download another gig for this mobile game. I already downloaded, like, 5 <laughs> gigs. Why? Why anyway, is this okay? Let me skip cutscenes. Uh, I'm the only one here that's going to be able to understand them anyway, and I don't care. I'm just looking forward to you seeing what the fuck this thing is. Because you are not going to fucking believe it. I guess I guess the follow-on question is, does this game know what the fuck it is? Or is it one of those? Oh no, this game knows exactly what it is. Oh god, I just got a- I, I'm gonna blame you for this. I just got a Twitter ad for Fate Grand Order USA. New chapter added. Lost Belt number two, the Eternal Icy- Perfect. Icy Fire. Century- the, the Eternal Icy Fire Century Gothram Rung, the Good Fellow of Everlasting Flame. That yep. is one, one single sentence. Hold on, Twitter. I'm gonna go ahead and block Fate Geo USA. Yes. Done. Situation resolved. All right, so, uh, oh, it looks like this is a rhythm game, but I can't hear audio. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh. What? Oh, you were looking away. D yeah, uh-huh. Um, no, I'm just, it's really delayed. Oh. Oof, ah, uh, hmm. Hang on. I need to. I'll. I'm gonna investigate this audio situation. Just, just throw in a little spark ball at a cat. Yeah. All right. Is there? No, this is not actually theater rhythm. It's more of a turn-based. Well, you'll see. Is there a oh. reason why audio is not coming through? Ha! Yeah. Hmm. Uh, they're, they're, the cat is very upset. Yes. Wah, oh, wah, I know wah, what it is. Wah, 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 wah. So they make, they made Sonic Chronicles for the DS. Here it what is. is this poor, this poor cat is just getting... So, uh, I promise you the tutorial before this, uh, was not a rhythm game in any way. Good. So this is, uh, multiple genres. Um, please let me this skip. Se this seems dull. Yeah, I'm trying to get to, uh, that good shit that you'll understand why this game makes bank in Japan. Does that have waifus? No. Okay, so that's that's one of the obvious reasons gone. Does it have random pulls for Disney characters? Not per se. I actually don't know what mm. the monetization model is. I assume it's got gotta be gotcha because it's one of the highest grossing games in Japan. Uh, there was an Inazuma 11 mobile game that was trash, but it only, um, was portrait mode, which made it a bitch to try and stream, so. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Look, they're gonna keep trying to get that brand back up so they can sell shit again. Yeah. It is one of the high, it was among the highest grossing. Anyways, uh, this is an Otome game with generic what? husbandos that are based loosely around different Disney villains. God damn it! This is an Ultimate game. I thought I was close, I just had it backwards. Yes, you did. Yeah, God there are no female it. characters other than the uh, protagonist. Ah! Oh! I guess it's a different rhythm game now. The first part was a turn based RPG. Did that say Prologue 5? Yes, it sure did. At some point, you've just started your game and need to stop calling it Prologue. We're on Prologue 236. Uh, this thing sure does. Season 7 of the Prologue. Wait, does it support? Okay, it does support the mouse now. Good. It didn't on the first, so I Cat will. is very upset. Okay, here we go. What's that Luigi's Mansion character doing here? Uh, probably from a Disney animated short at some point. Are the oh. female villains turned to male villains? No, there's a bunch of furries that are loosely based on Scar from Lion King. A, a bunch of distinct Scar furries? Yeah, uh-huh. There's is, is a couple of um, mall goth emos based on Hades. But Hades isn't goth or emo. He's yeah, but they're they're wearing face masks uh, that are like light up like they're at an EDM concert. I mean, as you do, social distancing responsibly while while dropping ecstasy. It's fine. Is it? Is it? I. But Hades is supposed to be like a sarcastic old dude. Uh huh. Oh, right, it's an Otome game. None of this matters. Yeah, That's no, it's there's... not actually Hades. It's just right. multiple young 20-something bachelors who they think exude Hades energy. Oh, good. Yeah, that's the energy I'm looking for. It's like the people who... Um, not quite cosplay at Disney World because you can't portray the characters, right. but you're trying you're to like, dress with that. Adult. Yeah, dress with that vague aesthetic. Yes, evoke. Yes, well, I forget the word for that. There's absolutely a word for that, but Creepy. for like that whole culture. But this is very much that energy. I am. Anyways, we're on prologue six now. Pro yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I hear really good things about Prologue 19. Uh, okay, this is another of the game, so we're closing the app. Bye. Uh, uh, so this is uh, by a developer. Uh, is there is there a husbando based on the Doctor and Frog Princess in a way that's incredibly offensive? I wish. No, no, that villain is very much not there. Japan is not interested in New Orleans racism. That's just America. Okay. Tino what is Taku this game? Save the World. That's what this game is. Mm. Do they? Yeah. Anyways, I don't know any jack shit about this game other than that it has a very it took a very long time to download. It's probably all this opening cinematic. Mm -mm. This opening cinematic was looping while it was downloading. This was the initial what is... download. What's that nerve shit they've got going on the board there? Oh, that's why. Alright, sure. Oh no, this game requires more like six additional gigs, not two. What? Nothing- there was nothing there to explode. Oh, is, is she also president of Japan? I feel like this is a game where she should be know. president of oh, Japan. Oh no! This is a little more direct control than I was expecting. I don't have a controller. This feels like it's- oh no. Okay. 
I should oh, have brought a controller. Oh yeah. President of Japan is here. I really should have. Oh, and that shit. girl grows up to be Bayonetta, or is Bayonetta right now? You don't know that. All right, where can I pause? Because I'm just gonna, I just wanna just sink a controller. This actually is the start of Bayonetta 2. He's right. It just needs, it just needs a layer of Christmas and we would be there. Like, yeah, this is just someone wanted to make Bayonetta Liberation Maiden. That sure is just what this is. <laughs> big, big Japanese presidential energy coming from this young Bayonetta. Okay. That's still my favorite, like, story contrivance in any game ever. She's the hereditary president of Japan. What's wrong with that? Okay, I am going to uh, back out real quick and just put the Devil's Third logo up on the stream just to cover while I uh, sink a controller. Oh, good. No, that's not unsettling to look at. Because uh, I just need to see if that would even work. I want so badly for this game to not support controllers. I want that I want that in the worst way. For them to have just been like, why why would you use a controller for our fine, definitely not Bayonetta inspired game? Uh why is it not showing up? There it is. Xbox why this controller. You know Another I love technical difficulties. Um, yeah, I just suit. I have this on a kickstand, and I super was not going to. Uh, sit and play with a touch analog stick. Oh my god. Okay, controller, shut the fuck up. So how's your week going? Uh... It's going. I, uh, I haven't watched the, the New Game Plus video yet. People keep telling me I should because it's weird. It is weird. Um, uh, the biggest announcement was East 9. That was what they yeah. closed on, which that should tell you just about everything. Well, I mean, to me, that's awesome. Oh, it sure is. Like, like I... Oh, Yay. no. This doesn't support controllers. <laughs> Fuck I, this I game. Bye. Also, also, does that mean that Ease 9, like Ease 8, is going to be Switch only outside Japan? What? No, East 8 came to PS4 first, and then PC, and then Switch. This is coming to PS4, and then PC Switch. But did, did the 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 Japanese ever get a Switch release of East 8? Yes. Okay, I wasn't sure, because the localization publisher is the one who had it produced. Yes, yes they were. Uh, Alright, uh, James. Which of these eight icons... Do we want to open up What's... next? Not Twisted only... Wonderland and not the first one. I only see two icons here, but one of them's repeated many times. One of these had an eight gigabyte download that took almost an hour. All right, well let's let's see that. Let's see who put the max in. Uh, Psy Games. No, oh, no. This is the one that I actually trust because Psy Games puts out good shit. It's gonna be like a ten minute video at the start, isn't it? They earned my trust with Dragalia, so... Oh no, I downloaded the English version of Bang Dream because, uh, I... Most of the top 15, like, 8 of the top 15 Japanese highest grossing apps are just clones of Bang Dream by the same developer. Bang, bang, bang Dream? Yep. 
Am I going to have to find out what Bang Dream is? Yep. Okay. Full animation. Oh my god, it has more to download. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's say voice data download off. We have detected that you have approximately 32 gigabytes of storage free. We would like to download oh, 31 gigabytes more. of data. All right. Why would you name your game that? I mean, look. I, maybe maybe you're trying to attract attention. Bang Dream is also an anime. It's it's one of it's like love it's a love life competitor. So it's trying to be in all the same markets. That that checks out. And Idol Master Love Live, and trust me, there are Idol Master Bang Dream clones by the Bang Dream developer. There are Love Live clones by the Bang Dream developer. They're not picky. Oh my God, what is that art style? I should note that I didn't look at what these games were before I downloaded them. How did this take that many gigabytes? What the fuck is this? Do I need an adult? I mean... I mean, I am an adult, which makes this feel illegal. Yeah, I'm seeing some characters that are obvious. Like, look, that's just the heroine from uh, Tales of Vesperia. These are all just stolen character art. All of them. Holy shit. This is amazing. Like the three we've seen so far all have are all like really, really stolen. Regalia is my favorite mobile game. Maybe that's the Nintendo influence. I'm thinking that's the Nintendo influence. Why is Tube Top Cat Girl on my screen? Because because you're going you to jail. This was a sting operation. You can't, that's entrapment. You can't do that. Um. Yeah, these are just stolen. Just big, huge, stole. Yeah, I'm skipping the story cutscene. God fucking damn it. More data to download. I oh downloaded so much goddamn data. How is that not everything? Because there's more, obviously. That's just a stell. I'm sorry, that's just a stell. You can't you can't tell me that's not a stell. She even, has, she even has the same outfit on. Somebody call Bandai Namco. We're gonna bring the law to Psy Games. <laughs> That's a stupid broken gear wing. No, I need that. So how about, while this is all downloading new data, how about that Sega survey, huh? That survey is, um... It's, it's so bad! How is it that bad? It's fascinating. That survey had big RFN energy. It's just like, why does... That's, why is... They've basically put up that survey a dozen times, except I don't usually remember my version of the survey getting to uh, question 131. Mine only got to the 90s. Oh, yeah. It, I've... I've played a lot. So I, I like it was very much like yeah. Talk to me about your feelings about Choo Choo Rocket. <laughs> I got that one, and uh, my response was, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish that was there for some of them because it's like yeah, I've played Odin Sphere. I wouldn't call myself a fan of Odin Sphere. I well, I mean, the, your choices were fan, love, love like, like, dislike, dislike. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? I will say that for Catherine. Uh, I, I went off about the homophobia and the transphobia, I went off about their weird reduction of morality and relationships, and then I, I concluded by bashing their netcode. I... 
<laughs> my favorite was all the Catherine ones where it's like, would you buy blank? All, all made it sound like they were written from the perspective of, would you buy DLC from Catherine? No, I wouldn't buy anything from Catherine. She's like some kind of demon. No, I'm not, I'm not giving her money. That's not going to go well for me. Would you be interested in, in giving Catherine money for extra story content? No. No, I will not. Uh, Spin Dash. Uh, GX. Choo Choo Rocket can come to PC before September. If they really wanted to. Like, Apple Arcade games don't have to wait a year to come to PC. They just can never come to Android. Yeah, yeah. I I'm also looking forward to a sequel or extra game in the Persona 3 series. Look, you know what they mean. Think about the Persona 4 series. Well, they didn't ask me about the Persona 4 I series. I know, they sure, they sure didn't. That's because they're not about to port it to Steam. They already ported it to Steam, but they're they're working on a P3 thing. That's been... <laughs> they didn't ask me before. Yeah. Conspicuously absent. Uh, they also didn't ask about P5. Uh, no, they didn't. They asked about the, about the survey. They asked about the franchise, but they didn't go through the generic thing for that or the Q games. It was just three, and then Catherine. I got I got additional questions about P5. I don't remember what they were though. Okay. Oh oh, I got questions because I hadn't played P5R. Oh yeah. So it shot me into a whole. It's like, why haven't you played them? And one of the choices is I've basically played this game already. Well, I'm glad they're self-aware. I was like, that one. Yeah, GX, that's a basically a different company that does Total War or Football Manager. That Sega Europe is they're, not they're treated the of, same as Sega Atlas. They're free of the taint. I, I, I was amused because the fact that I had heard of all of these Sega franchises, like Streets of Rage and also Streets of Rage 4. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah meant that I got the- I got questions about so many fucking things. Have you heard of the Streets of Rage franchise? Well, yes. Have you heard of the Streets of Rage 4 franchise? What? It didn't- it, well, it didn't- yeah, after the- after that, it only asked one question about Streets of Rage 4, which was like, um, what's your experience with Streets of Rage 4? It was very conspicuously a very different style of question than any of the generic ones. So I got one question about Streets of Rage 4. I hadn't played. I did not mark that I'd played it because I haven't. But I played Streets of Rage, and it asked me like, basically a question along the lines of, "Would you be interested in playing games in the Streets of Fo Rage 4 series?" And oh, I'm like, that's "One." Weird. That was my thoughts. Like, that's not a series. That's a game. Yes. Uh, yeah. This game. Uh, we're done. That's I'm. Sad. I'm I'm confused by this game because there's just I guess this is a tutorial so it's just introducing everything yeah so this is bang dream this is the English version of bang dream so that you guys can fully enjoy it so that we can all dream together collectively oh boy oh already oh why are there two zombies oh Jesus that was that was 200% moe Uh, I think the trend that you will have noticed is that all of these use live 2D to animate their characters. They sure do. All right. So I would give her 10% Moe. Let's max it out. Let's find, let's, let's break the Moe indicator. Yeah, live 2D is a hell of an animation tool. Yeah. Like, it's it, really good. It, it's what uh, Fire Emblem Fates used. Yep. It, and it looks good. Uh, it is very lightweight middleware that is very easy to develop for. And cheap to license, which is also important. In cases like this, probably more important. Uh, this game makes ungodly amounts of money and has <laughs> so many crossovers. More downloads. More downloads. All right. Circle, wait, wait, hold on. That was Circle written in the same way that Circle writes it. Yep. I, is this their thing? No. Nope, completely unrelated, I promise. <laughs> How do you do that? 
circle right their way, their thing in a very stupid way with the lowercase i. Yep. It's definitely trademark. Eh. So many songs. Wait, is this is this is this Love Live or is this um Idol Master? Yeah. It's right in between. Oh good. It's that intersection. It's, yes, these are is... covers of other songs. This is this is the Moe Trash Interchange, I see. By the way, we are absolutely getting copyright claimed off this shit. Oh yeah, it's so So which of these tropes is the one that I'm supposed to date? All of them. Until you find the one that's your soulmate. Obviously. I'm sorry, what? A really, actually... really bad cover of a Miku song. I, I a mean really bad cover. Sure. Also, Se uh, Sega Server didn't ask about Miku. Uh, about Miku? Nope, not at all. Which is weird. Oh, that's right. They have P Persona music in here too. Of course they do. It's also a really interesting. Is, is this cover. is this the next game in the Persona 4 series? Uh, there is a P4 song. <laughs> I would like a sequel to, P to Persona 3, but I don't know what you would call it. Persona New 3. Done. I fixed it. Yoshi's New Island did it. Pokemon, you can have the first one with freckles. In fact, you can have all of them. I'm not going to fight you for these. I'm just going to say high school I'm sorry. To, make, to make me feel better. Speaking of games that you can license, or songs that you can license for anything, a Cruel Angel's Thesis is in here. <laughs> sorry, too rough. Do, do you do you ever think that like the creative staff of that of that series looks around at what they have wrought and said, "God, I wish we had made something slightly less popular." Yeah, probably. All like right. I wish, I wish we had just made another Gunbuster. I'm just looking at songs, and I'm I have so much currency to buy these covers that I'm just grabbing all the ones that I know. Hideo Akiano looks at what he hath brought, and finds only sadness in waifus. Uh. I worked on Godzilla, he screams into the darkness. It's possibly the best Godzilla movie made in 50 years. I wrote his and her circumstances. A show you say that's not new Persona 3 broken. featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series, but the mobile game Shin Megami Tensei Liberation Dishu has a, a DMC5 collaboration with V, Nero, and Dante in it, as well as Bayonetta. Am I going to need to call Matt and ask him what the fuck he just said? Like, I'll do it. I'll call him and just go, Matt, what the fuck? Seren just said this phrase to me, and I'm pretty sure she's lying. Can you help? Oh, no. He's he's well aware. I've talked to him about that specific collaboration. Anyways, this is the rhythm game gameplay. This is the core loop. I, lo I like the just, just random manga panels. Just fuck it. Here's a manga panel. I have audio lag, which is great because of the streaming setup. Good. They they really really couldn't do more than just static images that they bounce and and crush. Well, you don't want the performance to take a hit on the rhythm game. I'm sure I mean, but, their excuse. What, but what if you did, let's say, something instead of nothing? Oh boy! Right, oh, that oh didn't wasn't ready for the moe art, but there it is. This is boring Hello. as hell. Let's pick a higher difficulty. So is it is it based on where you tap on the screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, which means that this is incredibly um dependent on the size of the device you're using. And I'm using the biggest device that will run this game. There you go. Oh. Which makes it actually harder. Oh boy.
Oh, this is much faster, though. Yes. They spent all the animation budget on the dating. I mean, that's the part you should spend it on. You got, you got to stand out in the world. Great. I mean, I'm not wrong. That's the sad part. <laughs> You're, if you're making a mobile game for Japan and you gotta figure out where the budget goes and it's a rhythm game slash dating sim, you put like 3% of that budget in the, in the rhythm game. At best. About 50% goes to licensing music and every other cent is spent on the dating sim. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna bail there. Uh, that's really, really, really hard on a very, very big screen where I'm having to move my hands multiple inches side to side. Yeah, this feels like a game things. that on a big, on a big tablet or a really small phone is a nightmare. Yeah. Um, I will say, I am very... Um, I like all, all the non-protagonist models with basically no faces. I am very, um, happy with... The, I, I like the concept of free-to-play rhythm games, just b largely if if only because th there is a financial incentive to make it hard. And my problem with most rhythm games on consoles is that they're too easy. I would like games to be exploitative so that they are the right difficulty for me. I wish I didn't have to go that way. I also want to point out the honesty of that game where there's just a big button on the screen that says gotcha. Yes. It's just like, no, we know what we're making. And we're not we're not we're not embarrassed. At least not um, about the oh, DNA, we're we're doing the grand tour. I I bounced because it's vertical. Oh. Uh it's an anime uh shadow themed Othello game. It's called Ethelonia. Anyways, if we are going to go uh, with uh, land with deep portrait or yes, portrait mode, uh -huh. then I would rather just go check in on Nintendo's games. Dragalia Lost. Which is my favorite mobile game. So I need, to, I need to use your restroom real quick. I'll be right back. I have questions about Dragalia Lost. Okay. I'm gonna get copyright claimed anyway. I'd rather listen to the music a bit louder. This game is fucking fantastic. This is like secretly Nintendo's best ongoing game. And I am... I wish more people were playing it. I also wish that the microtransactions weren't fucking busted as hell. Because it's like $40 to get anything. And I want to give this game money because I love it. But the value is just so not there. Wearing armor brings such joy, I often make improvements that are unrequested. Are reindeer nocturnal? Alright. So I've never actually played Regalia Lost. I, I, uh, I think I downloaded it, but treat. then never actually oh, launched some it. Devious right. mischief. Um, I, I, I don't I mean I really don't play mobile games. Is is part of it? Right. So questions. Uh, this yeah. Ask me questions in good faith, and I'll give you good faith answers. 
What is it? It is an action RPG with a Diablo-like loot system. Okay. So how does it how does it play? Vampires rule the night. I will show you a level. Just because this is on a big screen, are you going to be okay if I let it go on auto so that you can just see it play? That's fine. Okay. Uh, you move around just by uh, like touching and dragging. You flick to dodge roll, you tap to attack, and then you have um, core attacks along the bottom of the border. So, so very uh, kinetic. Yes. yes, very kinetic, very fast paced. Hunter's Creed. Ready when you are, dragon. Oh god. Oh god. Victory is sweeter. Granted, so that much... is running at 2x speed, but. Yes. Oh That's god. a lot visually. Yes. Uh, there's also a uh, town building mode. Okay. Which uh, will be on the stream once this part catches up, I guess. Okay, I see it now. Yes, but I've been building out my Halidom for a couple years now. This game is really that old. Uh, sure is. And then... Uh... Yes, so... Basically... The... The most core if you keep loop... staring like that, I'll... I'll suck your blood! <laughs> is, um... The main story. And they actually just a few days ago put out, um... Chapter 14... Uh, the writing in these games are incredible. It starts out being a relatively generic fantasy story with well-written characters, and then it keeps pivoting with like new plot twists every like four, three, four chapters, and it's been very, very compelling. Um. The, there are basically four things that you can upgrade. There's your adventurers, which you can't have duplicates of. Okay. Um, you might notice crossover characters like Mega Man, some of the Fire Emblem characters, and some of the, and some characters from Monster Hunter. Sure. Because they've had all those crossover events. Um, weapons, which is the primary um, loot and crafting loop, is you're getting weapons or you're getting crafting materials and you're building weapons, but it's not just as simple as building weapons. Um, you're trying to build multiple copies of the same weapon and you're trying to run end game level content. Like, okay. you're, you're trying to get up to, to the highest level you can and keep running the highest level you can repeatedly so that you can... Um, Let's see here, let me turn the line down just a little bit on the game. Um, so that you can get better drops that are where you are, and you're trying to basically do that loot treadmill as um, as your progression. Uh, how much does it roadblock you from progression, if at all? Honestly, very little. Like, you can get through the main story, like the full main story, barely doing any of the endgame content, but that's where a lot of the... Um, that's where a lot of the more interesting content is, the stuff that you can't just play on auto. Uh, this has um, qu quick matchmaking with four-player co-op on almost all of the level levels, and especially the endgame content. And so it's about like pairing up, forming a quick raid group, doing a two-minute raid, and getting out. How 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 long would you say the main content or the the main story content is? Um. Maybe an hour and a half per chapter. 
Oh, okay. So it's not it's not out of how many chapters? Fourteen. Okay, so it's not short. No, it's not short. It's it launched with like six chap five six chapters, and they they've added one like every two three months. Um, it's the stories the writing's really engaging. You can actually see more like um micro stories uh, over here to, but um, like just fluff stories or character backgrounds uh, when you get your your fillery stuff or backstory stuff yeah the um, character when you get a character you can read uh, five story scenes about what that character is about for a, when you pull a dragon you can get uh, two backstory for that dragon um, and then there are I'm so happy there's always an event going on and so, for instance, right now, the event going on is a rerun of their last Halloween event. And that comes yeah. with themed story, um, and then specific challenges, and a specific, um, like, three different types of event-specific um, loot drops that you can then exchange to get much more valuable things that you would want to take out to the full game as well as getting original characters or original facilities for your castle. Um, it is a really consistent loop that feeds into each other. The first maybe 9 to 12 months of the game, it was like that, good but not great. And then <laughs> the um, they had a director change. Oh. Very publicly. And the oh. new director uh is super super responsive and is posts monthly updates that are basically just uh, responding to the top in-game feedback things just like a peek at like what the next three months of content and updates are going to be how they're addressing um balance changes new features how everything is going to get shuffled around um adding more post-game content so that players don't fall off while also easing the on-ramp every couple updates. So the Final Fantasy XIV style live service curation. Yeah, it's, um, yes, they're, they go back and they rebalance old stuff that while adding um, more and more new stuff. And like, I talked to you about how like the microtransaction fees are nuts, but- right, Don't make any sense. But the game also never once asks you to pay really like there's no there's no paywall on be on being viable so how do they make their money i wish i knew more than a few training dummies in my time but the actual premise of the story yes so oh lord All do right. they make money what you say do they make money yes this is nintendo's this is uh, okay. in nintendo's Top three highest grossing ga uh, mobile games bouncing back and forth for the number two slot with Animal Crossing. Gotcha. Um, almost all of its money comes from Asia. This is a very, very Asian game. Uh, Asian market okay. game. So, the premise of chapters one and two is that, uh, so... People of a, the royal bloodline of the capital city, of which your main character Yudin is, he's the seventh in line to the throne. So he's never actually going to get the throne, but he's seventh in line, and uh, people in his uh, bloodline can form bonds and pacts with dragons to be able to shapeshift into the dragons. He has the unique ability to be able to form pact with multiple dragons um, okay. at the same time. So, like, he can't transform into multiple at the same time, but, like, it's not just one for the rest of his life. He can kind of be polyamorous in that way. Um, or polywormist? Like I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to call it polyamory when we're talking about dragons. Yeah. But, um... 
yes. So, he, um, he meets up with story characters that have different political... It's a game that's very, very interested in the politics of the kingdom, the politics of the family line, Yudin's siblings, the, um... The life of the people, of the subjects, and the, um... The religion of the world. Okay. And it starts off pretty generic fantasy, and then it kinda just... It keeps twisting, it keeps twisting, and eventually it just gets nuts in a really exciting way. Um, the writing is fantastic. It's a collaboration between 8-4 and Treehouse on the localization. If you keep staring like that, I'll, I'll and money, that. money was spent on this thing. Oh, this is... This is Nintendo's highest budget mobile game by a long shot. Um... You sure? I mean, Mitomo looked like it really broke the budget. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, that next that and Mario Kart are the highest budget. Um I don't know if you've checked it on Fire Emblem lately. Emblem. Not in a bit. Heroes. Um It's in a weird space right now, but they're coming up on the end of um book four of the main story. Mm. There's book one, which is bad. It's just uninteresting, and I do not blame anyone who bounced off this app in the first five months because the main story content they kept adding was just bullshit. It was just, hey, Veronica has fo has called in characters from Fire Emblem Awakening this time. Go fight them. Yes, yeah, it was. It was a lot of that. It's like, oh no, Krom is here, and he doesn't seem to understand what's going on. I bet we're going to have a fight. Yes, book one has... has Their overarching theme is introducing characters, not a story. Book two introduced the story the concept of having an overarching story, I guess. Um, between a kingdom of ice and a kingdom of fire. Book three is about the uh, moving through the realm of the dead and family lines, and book four is about fairies in the realm of dreams. And uh, there straight up is just a, uh, a line recently where it's like, and I'm the... Of, of a very of a very well endowed fairy that's just like and I'm the fairy of lust and I'm here to infect you you minor aged you underaged main characters okay uh it's, well they they have just decided to go all out on the horniness lately on fire emblem main story it's interesting I mean that that basically sounds like the plot of a charge man Ken episode where they aliens show up and they make kids eat eat mind altering mushrooms. So I mean look, I, I'm I'm probably a nerd to that bullshit. Yeah, honestly. Um yes. If Dragalia Lost was on Switch, even in a free to play form, I think it would do very, very well. It is a console quality game. Do you, do you, uh, here's a question. Yes. Why don't they? I don't know. I know why additional devices to support additional input methods, maybe, I don't know. I can understand sure. it for games like Mario Kart Tour and Fire Emblem, be especially because th these experiences are designed to be like Fire Emblem H Heroes is the Fire Emblem game you play on your phone in the checkout line in between releases of Fire Emblem games. But when a Fire Emblem sure. game comes out, they actually, like when Three Houses came out, they wa they wound down content updates on Heroes for about two weeks while people, while they expected their user base to largely be playing three yeah, three houses. Um, Mario Kart Tour, they don't want to put on consoles because also right. that would look very that, that would look very poorly on reflect very poorly on Mario Kart Tour, what's literally on the same system as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Right. In that case it makes a lot more sense. Dragalia Lost, I do not know the answer. I do not know why. Because I, I could see I, I could see Fire Emblem on Switch as well. Just just as an app you have on your screen you can check yes. in with periodically. Especially if they could make it so your you know, your mobile device and your Switch device had the same account. Yes, and they do. It um all of your progress and all of Nintendo's mobile games are stored with on your Nintendo account. Yeah, I, I could see them especially because then if you buy if you buy polls on on the Switch, they get to keep all the money. It's they, true. Don't have, they don't have to give any. Although I know Apple can get 
fucking obnoxious if you if, if there's methods to buy things that show up in their app but not from them. Yes, paid so. orbs uh, or paid any currency on any game that is on Android and iOS specifically will not transfer if you move if you migrate from like an iOS to an Android or an Android to an iOS. Right. The paid currency will not move back and forth, but the free currency will. Uh, but if you're moving Dr. iOS, Mario iOS will carry forward. That's true. Dr. Mario World won't, won't go in the console. It gets rejected by Nintendo's own lot check. <laughs> they look at it and go, no. They, they let through um, the fucking launch game with the motorbike. Room in the Night Sky. They won't Room in the Dr. Night Mario Sky World. is a classic. It was also on Sega Survey. Have you, have you played games like Room in the Night Sky? <laughs> I do want to point out that we, we, we've talked about it, but we haven't mentioned the fact that when they when they went through like what types of genres oh. do you want to play, um, platformers did not include any Nintendo games. It's true. They're examples. It's like, are you serious? Are you really are you really this petty? Uh, their puzzle games didn't include Puyo Puyo. It didn't. You're right. Even though there's a whole bunch of questions about Puyo Puyo. It's true. Um... Room in the Night Sky is not a better game than Dr. Mario World, but it is a doctor in Dr. Mario World. I mean... The doctor of Room in the Night Sky? Sure. Yeah, that Whatever. checks out. Whatever. Um, this game is really weird to look at. Far our future. The Fire Emblem Heroes? Yeah. Yeah, I it's bet. Inter Certainty its interface is, is not, we'll call it ideal. For our future. There's, there's, there's a lot going on, visually. Oh, I don't have settings. Con the settings didn't move between my phone and my iPad, so it is showing all of the animations. No. No. Simple. Uh, I feel like this... There's definitely something in this game that could have made it pop a little bit more. But I'm not yeah. entirely sure what that thing is. I get it. All right. Who's next? Yes? Oh, that's not actually what I wanted. Uh, okay. Consider it done. Like this? Oh no! It shall be. Uh, I mean, everyone is chibi because... The production, like the production on these characters, is already just so much. Without you having three D models, trust. like they hire contract artists to, um, like fr just freelance artists throughout Japan to draw each of the individual characters of uh, four large portraits per. Consider it done. They um, strength for our future. Record everything in Ooh. English and Japanese. Except for one character who they couldn't get the English voice actor to come in because With of COVID. So they, in the announcement like trailer, this. they literally just said, like, we're going to patch in the English language at a later date. Great. A solid move. Uh, and that's the yes. simplest and clearest sign of exactly how trust. far ahead they are in terms of character voice recording that COVID is for starting to catch up with them. I, I like that voice act like professional voice actors who have gone through the money of building a studio in their house it because they're, be. they're lazy and don't like to Consider travel are now the only ones who are able to work. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm, remake, I'm remaking all this money I spent on my lazy like isolation this? studio. Ooh. Good for them. Right now. You have my trust. Taking full Witness advantage. A 
I've definitely heard a lot of pro voice actors who I recognize, like, narrating ads who don't normally do ads. And I'm like, really? Oh, Sean Shiplock. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's get everywhere that, now. He, he, that hosted, he hosted the New Game Plus Festival. Or the oh, Xbox. God. Get yeah. that money. My trust. Yeah, uh -huh. you, you built that studio. You, you get that money. Chase that dollar. Uh, I heard somebody do I think it was like a subway ad. I'm like, are you done. fucking for real right now? A solid move. Is this where it we're at? Be. This is a really weird game to play with a mouse cursor, let me tell you. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's somebody play I mean I played a lot of this game and it's it's pretty unsa like I, this was my this was my like elliptical my game at like, the gym. Yeah, like this. Um because I'll be on it for like forty minutes and that's really boring. Yes, I play this and and regalia every day. Um, I do appreciate that Nintendo did take the work to make Fire Emblem Heroes on iPad an actual iPad app, as opposed to, fuck you, it's an iPhone app that runs in the emulation mode. I, and the thing is, I can, I can see why, um, most don't, because lately especially, it, you know, tablets just aren't aren't moving the needle the way they used to. I mean, neither are smartphones. Well, yeah, but I mean, I mean, relative relative to smartphones and stuff. Yes. I their, forgot. Their, their market share is falling. Because phones have gotten bigger, ultimately. Yes. I super forgot to, uh, I'm gonna. A, uh, I, I remember distinctly for work when we were, we were, buying tablets for an initiative and like they just got really big because phones got big so tablets got bigger yep and we had one come in that like we put it in the hands of you know like 15 people that that would have to use it and one of them she's this she's, she's absolutely tiny woman she's maybe five foot she's like, i can't hold it like it had a hand we had a hand grip like you slid your hand in it and it just kept falling off her hand Right to the floor. And it's like, all right, this tablet's too big. <laughs> we need some more tablets. And like, well, this is this is the this is the model we think is right for your use case. I'm like, we can't hold it. All right. Physically, cannot hold it. I have migrated my account information from my Nintendo account, and now I get to download a gigabyte. A gigabyte um, of Devil's Third? No, a gigabyte of Pokemon Masters. Which I forgot is, that game exists. Yeah, this is the trainer collector game. Right. This this is This is the game. This is this is a game where like, oh, they're going all in. I see. Uh this is a weirdly high budget game that feels like it feels like no one plays it and it shouldn't be high budget. But they made their bed and now they have to lie in it that all of the character models are super high res and all the animations are super thorough. And that they have original Pokemon music remixes for almost every context. It's bizarre. Almost. Thank you to my fast internet. Pokemon Company isn't above killing a game. Rip to Pokemon Shuffle, but I'm different. I mean, they spent a lot of money on this game. They did. I mean, I mean, granted, when it got announced, I can't remember if if you or I talked. To, I think we did. We it talked about like, it together. Like, oh, they're just they're just going maximum. The fact this. that the microtransaction is not a Pokemon, nor is it a uh, character. It is the combination of both. Yes. That's the gotcha, so that you can get Brock with one and Brock with another. Right, and so you can get your your ideal husband, Brock. Yeah, I mm, this game, I don't know. It's I, an interesting I, battle system. I, yeah, but uh, yeah, not much else really to say. I wonder. I wonder what they're they're like. 
So Pokemon Company obviously does all their own stuff. They don't they don't work the Nintendo deal. Although Nintendo obviously had their hand in um, the Niantic stuff. Yes, to a degree. And of course, not Nintendo has their hand in everything to some degree, because the ownership stakes, um, and because as Greg points out, the the express lane from Pokemon Company executive suite to Nintendo executive suite. Yes. Presumably, they don't lose all their social connections when they move office. Um, but they, they really seem to, to have taken a different philosophical approach to mobile games at the Pokemon Company. Yeah, they sure have. I wonder how, how well that's worked out for them. Same, honestly. Because I would argue the, the most Nintendo-like thing they've done is probably the Niantic deal. Yes. And that's obviously been their most successful one. Because that thing was bringing in stupid money at some Still point. Still is. Is it really? Oh, yeah. Especially, um, they, through COVID, they went and retooled a shit ton of the game to be better to play at home. Oh, jeez. Which brought a lot of people back. Oh, jeez. I remember this uh, game's been around, been out for a while. Yeah, years, years and years. Magikarp Jump. Oh, jeez. Yes. That game they... was. Magikarp Jump isn't bad. That it's game was funny. so that, uh, because Pokemon Go was out when I was in Japan, and yes. that was that was literally, I flew out the day of the election. So for, for almost four years ago at this point. Uh, uh Pokemon. Oh, that is the wrong Xbox. Because I remember distinctly Carly going, I've got to get a Farfetch'd while I'm here because you could only get them in Japan at that point. Yes. And then it was like, we can't find any Farfetch'd. And I'm like, we are in Japan. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Um. Yeah, the, um... They have gotten through up to um, Pokemon Black and White generation. Okay, so they've gotten pretty far at this point. Yeah, and they teased in that Pokemon presentation from last week that they're about to uh, uh, introduce Mega Evolution, which was from X and Y, which implies that they're just about ready to roll out X and Y content. So that puts them two generations behind at that point? Yes, that puts them two generations behind at the start of the 3DS era. And then it's Sun, Moon, and then they would be at Sword Shield. And who the fuck knows what this thing is going to look like in three, four years when they're potentially actually caught up? Yeah, because presumably by then we'll have had at least one more generation they have to catch up on. Yeah, but like... What happens when they do eventually catch up? I mean, I think at that point you probably devote the efforts to, to basically rebooting the app. Or, Maybe, or, or yeah. making making bigger changes to it. Yes, they already re- they rolled out some of the... Um, some Pokemon from Sword and Shield, like Perserker, the Viking Meowth evolution, mm. is in. Um... Yes. Don't yeah, I, 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 I remember. In fact, actually, I still have um, coworkers, younger coworkers, who will go and do Pokemon Go stuff at the office back when back when we had an office, um, like at lunch, because for whatever reason there were like spots on the trails and at the office that would be that were hot. And I'd be like, where are y'all going? Oh, do- we're not going to do anything. And I'm like, all right, you could have given me the, you could have told me you're going to do drugs and it would have been less suspicious than what you just said. What are you doing? We're going to do Pokemon Go. Okay, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, where? Oh, it's, it's over in the, over in the woods. I'm like, you telling me you could go wander off into the woods? Yeah. Sure. Just go. Just, just. Just, just, just leave. I figured this is a thing I could put on stream while we talk about things. Just I mean, because I've played this game eight thousand billion times. 
I mean, I feel like if anybody knows if this game is okay to stream, it's you. So. Yes. No. This game is. Uh. Yeah. This game is. I just just downloaded it straight from Apple Arcade. Came out in Apple Arcade on October. Um. Uh, sort of. They changed up the battle system for PvP because they added in uh, online PvP, which where now it's it's tap and then you have your supers, but you strategize. You bring in three Pokemon and you strategize because you can completely prevent the effects of two attacks uh, throughout the entire battle, and so it's picking which ones and the meta of not knowing what your opponents have and all that good stuff i like the book pal summarize what you said with with much more succinctness there's two battle systems now for some reason yes there's pve and pvp which are different systems all right i don't think this game ever did uh, th this game was never vr enabled right uh huh there was one experiment internally on that that i know i'm clear to talk about because Will, the director, has mentioned this publicly, and uh, we just decided not worth the energy to go forward with it. I feel like there's a high probability of you just getting sick. Too. Oh, absolutely. This People, when uh, I was... To, myself and Will, uh, like 2016, 2017, were taking the game on the road and showing it at events, and... Um, to be clear, for people who do not know, I just realized that there is some assumed knowledge here. Yes. Um, this is Manifold Garden. I am one of the producers on this game. Uh, William Cheer Studio is the developer and publisher. William Cheer is the director of the game. It was in development for seven years before shipping uh, on Apple Arcade and the Epic Games Store last October. Uh, it is planned for release on Steam this October and uh ps4 shrug no comment but a lot point. of my focus is on uh the ps4 version and business planning and technological assistance anyways so yeah when we were uh taking the game and showing it people a lot of people asked uh I, like it, so it, is this gonna be in vr and i was like do you really want that and they're like no yeah, because like, it looks, it has the look of one, but like immediately as I was asking the question, I was asking it because it's going to be like, how many people threw up when this got tested? <laughs> I think only two people actually ended up testing it, but zero, I would so probably the say, answer... but... Oh, I thought you were going to say the answer is two then. Because <laughs> this feels like it would be incredibly uncomfortable. Uh, changing gravity, there are, um... So we do have... Um, an instant mode that speedrunners actually use where it just instantly swaps to the new gravity, which could actually be more jarring in VR now that I think about it, but like, we did at one point have, like, multiple different, uh, gravity curve variations for motion sickness. Yeah. That perspective change can be like, when the, when the the literal, like, what is up and down changes in VR, it's really upsetting. Yes. And, um... And I don't get motion sick in VR, but even that's like, ugh. Yeah, no, th this would probably be too much if I'm being honest. <laughs> it would be a lot. Um, but... It's just yes. people going like, oh, God. Oh, oh, jeez. Um, the, if, if you want to see this game played by people who understand the game less than I do, but are still way better at it than I am. Uh, there was a speed run at uh, AGDQ. Uh -huh. And the whole the whole team watched it, and then um, Will, the director, and one of the gameplay programmers, Aaron, uh, went on a stream to kind of break down, tr trying, like, sp t taking an hour to try and break down and react to, like, the fucking 20 minute speed run or whatever is it is it a speed run where the person just knows the game cold they know the game cold and they are glitching okay they are one of the 
techniques they use, they, they've dubbed uh, flating, which is flailing like an idiot tech, which is just if you grab a cube and stand up against a wall and just shake your mouse back and forth really, really, really fast, uh, sometimes you can just clip through the entire wall with the cube and no one knows why. Oh, nice. Yep. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the cube doesn't come through and then your run, run is messed up. But uh, that happened in the GDQ run that they just used, uh, they pulled, on PC you can pull up a debug menu and they just spawned a cube. Mm. Pretended it worked. But, uh, yes, the Manifold speedrunning community specifically, there's a lot of speedrunning communities that are toxic and I'm generally pretty happy that uh, the Manifold Garden speedrunning community seems really, really positive and uh, not super racist, which is ha notable or sexist. So, obviously, you, you have stake in this game. So, I'm, I'm going to ask you to make a judgment statement on a game that you worked on. So, this, obviously, this is going to be difficult. Yep. Adapting this game to to not having a controller, which is what you're playing with right now. Yep. How, how does that roll? Uh, this, feel, this feels like it would be very difficult to play with touch controls. Yeah, uh, it kind of has a touch, um, cause obviously it's on Apple Arcade, so it's on uh, right. Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS, and TVOS. I um, forgot TVOS was a thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I have, just forgot it existed. I have so many thoughts about Apple TV. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm in existing business relationships, so I probably can't, right. shouldn't say them. Understand. But, uh, they are, Hey, it's it's really affordable, and Apple TV 4K is like a hundred bucks. Right. Um. But. And you can use an Xbox and a PS4 controller, which makes the interface a lot better. But um. So specifically, um, it is it is tangibly not the not the ideal way to play. The ideal way to play is a mouse, keyboard, or a controller. But you right. can absolutely play the entire game start to finish with the touch interface. There's just like a gravity change button and a pick up put down button and then a rotate cube option and a like a like you can see it here I'm I just popped the touch interface. You'll see it in a bit. Like it's very it's very feasible. But um I would still recommend a controller if possible. I have a huge delay. Oh, because I'm not live. I'm, I'm on a time delay. That's, oh, that's that would do it. Anyways. Well, I'm, I missed the touch interface, but that's okay. I'll go back and see it. Yes. Uh, anyways, if you want to see... Because this game is really, really visually impressive, even on lower-end devices. Uh, I will leave this up for a little bit. I mean, for, Apple can be affordable sometimes. It's just... It's it's other things where they might get you. I think their iPad stylus is the same price as their uh, TV streaming box. Yeah, that's, that 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 checks out. Their 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 priciness is not always commensurate with what you would expect. Yes. Sometimes it feels ob obtuse. Um, internally we refer to these sequences. Uh, as AV sequences or just audiovisual sequences. Right. Uh, they're really, really cool. Um, oh, I, I can't talk about that. Um, sorry. The the beauty of, uh, of working on a game that ha is released but uh, is to some extent still live, like work is still being done on it. It's really weird to be playing a released version of the game and be like, mm -mm. I don't think that's been pushed to... Right. Game still, game is still growing and evolving. Well-timed. Yes. Red as a tree is growing, you said that. There we go. Um, 
But, yes, I don't want to spoil too many more puzzle solutions. Sure. I've shown the beginning of the game here. Oh, oh the, uh, the Pokemon Cafe mix is out, I guess? Yes. Yes, it is. Kikyo, I'm trying to describe that game was so good. I, um... Looks like you just twirl your finger? Yes, that came out on Switch a few hours before it came out anywhere else, just through a timing error. That's, thought... that's, that, that game is on Switch. So yeah, it's not like they couldn't put some of these things out. Or Pokemon Masters on Switch or whatever. Yeah, they could. Like, Pokemon Quest is an example of them doing that. I forgot Pokemon Quest existed. Uh, so did I until the Pokemon DLC has one of the characters uh, in their home playing Pokemon Quest on a Switch. And I'm like, oh, that's right, Game Freak did make Pokemon Quest. Still bad, though. Verizon is going to ship me a new router, and it has guaranteed date scheduled cost effective delivery in one to five days. That's not date scheduled. Great. <laughs> That's not date scheduled. No, not at all. Um, anyways, I think I'm going to call it for the stream here. Thanks, okay. everyone. And thank you to the usual crowd for following me to YouTube this time around. Uh, don't know if this is going to be a long term thing. Just feeling. Not up to streaming shot. on Twitch, given uh, recent events. I like that the the recommended video for this is Tokyo Mirage Session Sharp Effie. Oh yeah, that's because when I started <laughs> streaming, that was the last thing I streamed to YouTube through OBS, so it auto configured all of that. And I was like, great, thanks guys. Perfect, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. That's what we're looking at right now. Exactly. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.